Hi everybody, welcome to the Oh so Gecko channel. I'm Lisa and today's video is going to be all about using interfacing and stabilizers with cork fabric. If you like the video then press that little button at the bottom that says that you liked it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you're new to working with cork fabric and you're looking for some tips and tricks or you really want to chat with other like-minded people who love working with cork fabric then pop over to my Facebook group the cork fabric sewing corner I'll pop a link in the comments below for you over there you can chat ask questions share your creations anything at all so let's get started let's find out about those stabilizers with cork fabric Okay, so let's start on our interfacings. First of all, we have this one. Now this one is, I can't put a little crumpled. Um, this one is a lightweight, non-woven, fusible interfacing. So if you look at it, it's really light. Um, if you look carefully in the light, if you can see it, there are some little bobbly bits on there. That's the glue, which is on that side, and on this side there's nothing. Now this is super, super lightweight. You can see my hand through it. Um, it's incredibly floaty. You do not need to use this on cork. Um, it wouldn't help you. It's not going to give any stability to cork whatsoever. It's far too lightweight. Um, so this type of interfacing you would probably use on a quilting cotton or something maybe with a little bit of stretch, something that you're trying to stabilise to reduce the stretch or maybe to give a little bit more weight to it. But for cork, lightweight interfacing doesn't work. The next one is this one. So this one is a medium weight, non-woven, fusible interfacing. So it's a little bit stiffer. You can still see my hand through it just about. So if I bring back the lightweight one, you can see it's probably about double the thickness, I would say. You can still see my hand, but nowhere near as much as this one. Again, it's got on one side, if you can see, it's got a shiny side, that's the glue. And obviously the other side, there isn't any. Now, again, I wouldn't use this on cork fabric. Um, it doesn't have enough stability to it, although it is quite thick. Um, it does have its place occasionally but generally on its own with cork fabric medium weight interfacing doesn't work okay so let's put that one to one side as well now the first one that does work is this one this is decoville light um, as you can see you can just about see my hand through it um, we'll bring back the medium weight non-woven one and um, so you can see oh it's flying around um so you can see it's thicker than this one um as with the other two interfacings we have one side which is flat and the other side which is shiny that's the glue okay so this one does still crumple um it is quite a bit thicker and you can use this one on cork fabric it will have an effect the idea of using this one on cork fabric is to give a little bit more stability and structure as opposed to interfacing to stop stretch or anything like that. So this one is quite a nice one if you need a little bit more structure to your bag. Okay, let's put this one to the side. The next one is this one. This is Decaville Heavy. Um, I would advise keeping this out of the seam allowance. Um, if we put my hand underneath, you cannot see my hand at all. If we bring back the deck of the light. So you can see my fingers there, or you can see my hand a little bit if I shine it in the light. Um, this is probably, let me see if I can get that. If you can see the difference in thickness, obviously this one at the front is the Decaville Heavy and the one behind is the Decaville Light. So you can see it's probably double the thickness. 
So where your Decaville light is really good to give you a little bit of structure, Decaville heavy gives you lots of structure. It's fantastic for bag bases, um, for sides if you want something to really stop the cork from folding in on itself but we'll have a look at that in a minute. So that's the Decaville Heavy. The last one is this one. Now this is a three millimeter fusible foam. This is lovely to use with cork if you want to quilt it. So if you're looking to get that nice puffy quilted effect using cork, the three millimeter is amazing. Um, again, I would probably try and keep it out of the seam allowance where possible because with this and the cork, it does tend to get a little bit too much. Okay, so again, we've got, so if you can see that, a slightly shiny side and the other side that isn't. Okay, so those are our interfacing. So we've got the three millimeter foam, we've got Decaville Heavy and the Decaville Light. So you can see, I think, lined up how the thicknesses change from lighter through to the slightly heavier ones. Now, I did say that, put those to one side, the medium weight interfacing has its place with cork, not on its own, but if you're using a fusible foam. Now, if you don't want to quilt fusible foam, and you don't really want to sew it in because you're trying to keep it out of the seam allowance, you can use a medium weight fusible interfacing with your fusible foam. So what you would do is cut the foam slightly smaller than your pattern piece, probably a one centimeter, depending on the seam allowance, maybe a little bit more than one centimeter. And you can use the medium weight fusible interfacing to the same size, put your foam on and then iron on the medium weight interfacing to hold that foam in place. Okay, so it does work quite nicely with that. I would suggest though, if you intend to use foam because you like that structure, maybe doing some sort of quilting on it just to make sure it stays because foam being that little bit thicker it can come away. So now to our experiment. Um, I have here, just move all my interfacings out of the way, <coughs> I have here four identical pieces of cork fabric. Um, they have all been cut from the same roll um, one next to the other. Um, you can see they are all measured exactly the same. They are all 12 inches. One, two, three, four. Okay, on the back, they are a nice woven texture. This is a really good quality cork fabric. Don't know if you can see that, it's quite nice and thick. Um, it's incredibly flexible. We don't have any trouble with any cracking or anything on it. This is a really lovely piece of cork fabric. So they are all identical. They have all been cut from the same roll. So they're all the same. What we're going to do now is we're going to iron our interfacings onto the back of each of these. Oh, didn't measure that very well, did I? There we go. Um, we're going to put them onto the back of each of these, the foam, the Decaville Light and the Decaville Heavy. And then I've got one, which is our control. So we'll be able to see the difference for each of these and how it changes the structure of it. So I'm going to start oh, with the Decaville Light. Um, when you're ironing Decaville or any fusible interfacing onto cork, you need to be really, really careful. Um, cork is a really, really thin layer. 
glued onto a fabric backing. So in our ironing process, we need to be careful that we don't overheat the original glue that holds this together. If we do, then it's gonna start coming off and we're gonna have all sorts of problems. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my little prim iron here. Yes, I know I should have a bigger iron. Um, my last iron sort of went, I don't know what it did. Anyway, it doesn't work. So um, we are doing this with the smallest iron in the world. Um, but actually, it's an amazing little iron and it works really, really well and fantastic for after you've made your bags because you can get into all those little corners with it. Okay, so we're using a medium heat, as you can see. Um, I've only got it on number two here. I may turn it up a little bit if I need to, but usually two works really, really well. So we're going to start by just warming up the back of the fabric. Okay, it doesn't have to be hot, just a little bit warm, just to start things off. It's actually quite cold in my sewing room today. Um, so, I don't know how well this will work. It's not summertime with 40 degrees, unfortunately. Let's just warm that up a little bit. Okay, now let's make sure we've got this the right way around. So, shiny side down. Okay, and so, oh, cloth <laughs> nearly. Okay, so we're just going to start in the middle and move our way across, holding it in place. don't hold it anywhere for too long because it might burn or it might release that original glue which we really don't want to happen make sure we get the edges really well and the middle now this is hot mind your fingers it does keep the heat quite well. You need to wait until this has cooled a little before you move it. Obviously, if you've got a large ironing board, then it makes it a little bit easier. That has cooled a little bit, so I'm gonna move this. And we're gonna do the other part. Starting in the middle. Making sure we've got the middle, right, hold it again, it is quite hot, mind your hands, it does hold the heat really, really well. Okay, let's move that out of the way, right. Now, let's just go around the edges and check. That's sealed quite nicely. Oh, we've missed a little bit there. You can see that's coming up. So we'll have to do that piece again and we've missed a little bit here too. So let's just put this back on. This does take time. It really does take time but it's worth it in the end. If you rush this stage, then what you'll find is, as you're sewing or as you're turning your bag through, that your Decaville, or whatever interfacing you use, will start to peel away, which you really don't want to happen. Okay, let's just check this, that's okay. That side is okay. Right, uh, we can see there, I don't know if you can see, here in the middle, we're lifting up. Can you see that? That tells me that that's not sealed properly. So I need to do this bit again. Okay, that's better. Right, let's put this one to one side and we get on and we're gonna do exactly the same thing with the rest.
really important not to forget a press cloth when you're um, sealing the foam because um, it will most definitely burn. You can get away with the Decaville and Decaville light without a press cloth, but um, I wouldn't advise it with the foam because obviously the foam will melt. Right? Now, as you can see, that hasn't worked at all. Um, oh, it has started to here. It has started to. And um, this is a new foam that I've just bought. Um, obviously, not going to see it. So, let's try something. Now, I have done this before. We'll see if it works with this foam. So, I'm going to turn it over. Now. You need to be really, really careful. Cork is incredibly expensive and um, we really don't want to damage it. So, press cloth. Do not use your iron directly onto the cork. Um, you will damage it. So let's see if we can do it from this side. Keep your iron moving. You don't want it in one place for too long. But this might help set the glue on the other side or from the other side I should say keep your eye moving I know that some interfacing stabilizers say not to move it so much like this but with the cork it's better to be safe than sorry Oh, that's incredibly hot. <laughs> Let's see what that's like. Okay, that's worked. Okay, can you see that's sealed? So what you might find with the foam is that you need to do it from the other side. I'm gonna carry on doing that. Okay, so we've got our one, two, three cork pieces that have been treated and we have our control cork, which obviously has had nothing added to it. Um, so let's start. So so with our control cork, um, you'll notice that it crumples up quite nicely. Um, it's quite floppy. Um, if we hold it, it drapes straight away. There's no real structure to it as such. Um, it really is quite bendy and pliable. So this is our control one. Let's start with the Decaville light. So, as you can see, we're now going quite bendy. It's a lot more solid. Has a little bit more structure to it. Um, if I bend it, quite a large loop there. If I bring back our control one you can see this one sort of wants to complement itself where this one is definitely holding its structure um, if I hold it on my hand oh you can see it's not really it's bending a little bit here um, but it's holding its structure where if I do this one see this one is bending around my hand um, so between the two of them, let's get that on the side. <clears throat> Next is the Decaville Heavy. So again, we've got our control, which is super floppy, bending around my hand. Um, if I put the Decaville Heavy on my hand, let's make a slight noise so you can see. Um, not really bending at all. 
um, that is pretty much flat on my hand, bending a little. Uh, if we hold it this way, you'll see it's the structure of it. it sort of wants to hold. We've got quite a big loop there. Let's put it next to the deck of the light. We'll see the loop that it creates is quite a bit bigger. So it tells you how much more structure this one has compared with this one. So this is a deck of the heavy, this is a deck of the light. So you can see it doesn't fold in quite so much. I mean, we can make it fold in, of course, but even so, squashing them in like this, you can see the difference between the two. So this is where we say the Decaville Light is really good for adding structure to the sides, where the Decaville Heavy is really good for bag bases because it gives that firm base to it. Let's get this one side now. So we've got our control one back. This is our one that nothing's been done to. And let's bring in the foam. Now, foam, a bit like our Decaville Heavy, sort of between the two actually, Decaville Heavy, Decaville Light, but it is much more pliable. You can see it still has that drape to it. Um, it still wants to bend round if it's in my hand. You can see it's still draping nicely where the Decaville Heavy is more rigid. The foam does want to drape a little. Okay. Let's get the two next to each other. There we go. This way, they're really, really similar. Really similar. But obviously the death of all heavy has that structure that will lay flat, whereas the foam, you will get that bouncy drape to it and again um, if we bring our control piece in compared with our foam our control piece is bending over where our foam is only ever so slightly bending okay so I hope that's shown you a little bit about the differences between the fabrics and between the stabilizers I should say. Um, I didn't show you the <coughs> deck of the light. Oh that bit's come away a little bit hasn't it? Compared with the foam. You can see that foam really is quite a bit thicker. Um, it really does create a huge amount of thickness which is wonderful when you want to quilt it, it really does give that nice puffy texture to it. It's really, really lovely to quilt on. Um, so, when you're deciding what you want from your bag, you need to look at different stabilizers. Do you want something that is rigid and gives you a nice, Bend can give you a nice crease. Decoral light for the sides and the front. If you need the bottom of your bag to be quite rigid, something that it can stand on, then Decoral Heavy is definitely the way to go. If you're looking for something that maybe still has a little bit of movement to it, maybe something that's still quite structured, it will structure quite nicely, the same way the Decaville Heavy does, but not quite so rigid, maybe something with a little bit of softness to it, then the foam is definitely the way to go. Well, I hope that's helped a little bit. Um, I can't wait to see what you create, all your different patterns and the way that you use the different stabilizers. Um, don't forget to share any of your creations in the Cork Fabric Sewing Corner over on Facebook. Um, I'll see you there. Bye.